<laughs> all right, all right, all right. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome in. Yeah, found us once again. Shoot the gap. The uh, rabbit hole fantasy football focus show spanning the generation gap of the 20s and 40s. I am your humble MC, Brian the Amigo Baldwin. I am so happy that you found us and that you're here. And it's my pleasure, my honor to introduce Brock. Is it the Kamish or Retro Bush today? It's both. It's whatever you want, but it's mainly Kamish. However, the com- it still is Retro Bush time. <laughs> the Commissioner. Yeah. <laughs> the Commissioner of Retro Bush. The Gene. There we go. All right. And and the and the uh, the one uh, the one guy that you just heard uh, that's uh, sitting there um, laughing. The Eddie, the Eddie Murphy laugh. Actually, I was going to say the brother from Weird Science. <laughs> you know? You're the Dude, only one to say that. Everyone else says Chet? Eddie. Everyone else says Eddie Murphy. I think Chet. I think you're Chet. <laughs> well, you've already Con- called me. You've already called me Dolomite, so it still works. Connor, what's that? Look at Marshall. What's there up, you y'all? Go, man. Introduce it. Introduce it. Introduce it. All right, man. What's well, the first time we've got all of us back, man? All three of us, dude, in in, uh, in one sitting. That's pretty uh, pretty exciting. Well, cool. <laughs> I guess. To be, I, to, yeah. To be technically honest, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We we had yet another dress rehearsal. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, man. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, whenever you guys uh, are faithful followers, if you did not, uh, if you were wondering what happened to an episode, well, you know, man. You know, things 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 happen. It's uh, you know, you know. But we move on, and we have moved on, and it's now the sixty sixth show, June seventh, and this hopeful year of our Lord, man. We have a great show for you today. We're going to go and talk to you about the rumors and about the the news, and of course, I think. Uh, is this going to be the uh, the day, guys? Uh, um, Brock, is this going to be the show that we're going to talk about the top five fantasy producers of each week in the schedule? Um, I, I think uh, we sh- will be talking about a, a segment that I, I like to call Super Bold Predictions. There you go. That's why I set it up for you. Straight up. All right, man. Well, Straight you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll be getting to that. And so, but, you- that, but let's go ahead and get to this. <laughs> of course, that's Mr. Gary Gnu introducing the Gnu's. Yeah, man. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's just jump right into it. I'll start with a direct quote. Y'all done fucked up yep. from A.J. Brown. After what? After what, Connor? After what? After the Titans signed Julio, or no, they traded for Julio Jones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, they went and traded. Uh, he went to the Titans. That's Julio Jones. And uh, along with a 2023 20, sixth round pick, and Atlanta got a 2022 20, 20, second round pick and a 2023 20, fourth round pick. Brock, uh, you weren't here for the last show whenever Connor and I did this big thing about, you know, where, you know what would happen if uh, Julio hits here, Julio is there. So I'm curious, what is the ripple effect? Of uh, of Julio Jones landing in Tennessee, and dude, cover it, man. You haven't been there in a while, man. So I want you to take it. Go on. To cover it, whichever one you want. For Tennessee, mm-hmm. uh, I think long term, it sounds like they paid a lot. First of all, for Julio, I mean, a second round pick in twenty two, uh, sixth round. You said in twenty three. No, uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, fourth, fourth. Fourth round. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I mean, we're 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 looking for a high price there. That, uh, that they're they're going to be probably missing out on a couple of spots uh, come uh, you know in the future. They'll have to make up for it somehow. But uh, as it relates to fantasy, <laughs> uh, I mean, I just Tannehill just hit like you know the, the eighth or ninth round now. Like he became relevant. Uh, I think you probably could have gotten him undrafted in most extreme cases. Most likely, you know, he's going in the 13th or 14th rounds. I think now he's going in the ninth, ninth round, maybe 10th. I saw him in the seventh in the last mock draft I just did. Right before the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that there, there you go. I think uh, Derrick Henry uh, on the non PPR rankings, top 300 rankings. Uh, he is the number two pick just under Christian McCaffrey, but I think this signing McCaff McCaff. <laughs> I think this signing puts him above Christian McCaffrey as the number one overall pick 
in the, the top 300 non-PPR draft this year. Ooh, I don't know about that. Now, you know, man, I have to disagree. <laughs> Y'all uh, seen like, Office Space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's got leadership, leadership potential. Yeah. Uh, no, um, but uh, go, to go on with Brock's point, I can see what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, Derrick Henry is going to have a lot more scoring opportunities, potentially, if uh, Julio Jones can be safe or can be um, – can stay 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 on the field. I was trying to say. I, I don't think uh, it's okay. limited to standard, though. I think he's going to do good in PPR too. Oh yeah. You know, man, th- there was a stat I heard uh, not too long ago, about a month ago, about uh, running backs that ran over 370 um, runs attempts. the year before. Yeah, yeah, attempts. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and something like it hasn't ever like the the very next year the running back doesn't ever do as well as they did. The previous year, and I think the last time that happened was like in '84 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like Derrick Henry's the only non like old school football guy to do that in back to back years, correct? Well, um, yeah, but there is a concern that maybe this might be the year. That the, well, yeah, because he did it back to back, but people forget before 2018, Derrick Henry was not Derrick Henry; he was Derrick Henry. You know, because he was still <laughs> splitting time with Deion Lewis. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. He wasn't okay. a two thousand yard running back. I mean, no, he came out of nowhere because you y'all yeah. remember, like there was the in twenty eighteen, uh, like before he had his blow up game because we all remember his blow up game against the Jaguars for touchdowns. Uh, the Titans played the Patriots. And I remember that Dion Lewis went off that game because he used to play on the Patriots, and he was like, "Man, fuck those guys." And I was like, "Yeah, you know." But I mean, can yeah. he do it three years in a row? That's the big question. Yeah, PPR. I'm more of a Dalvin Cook guy before uh, De- Derrick Henry. Yeah, um, or Kamara. And, and, and Kamara, correct. In PPR. In PPR. But yeah, standard. I'm gonna. I, I, I'm gonna have to go with Brock on that. He's our our uh, our resident expert. Expert on on non, on standard on non PPR because he's the only one that plays that archaic uh, version of scoring in this group. Yes. You don't yes. even want to know how I take my women. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. So uh, what does that do for AJ Brown? Does he go up? Does he go down? Uh, and how about Anthony Furcher, the uh, tight end? Uh, I you know as it relates to the the tight end game, I think it. It marginally improves uh, Ferkshire's opportunities. Uh, you know, I mean, I think sure. you always, you know, I think he becomes a legit, everybody becomes legitimized with this. I think as far as A.J. Brown goes, uh, you know, I mean, he's going to likely see similar numbers. What was the 1,000-yard uh, receiver last year? Yeah, and th- that's going to be the thing, though, is that um, they're not going to be able to double team, you know, AJ yeah. Brown. We, you know, we did that. talk about this a lot in last yeah. week's episode. It really opens up the offense. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Brock, who's the winner on Atlanta? Um. <laughs> well, you know what I'm going to say. Go for it. Go uh, for yeah, it. We're talking Kyle Pitts again here. You know, he's he's going to get the lion's share of of those targets. Uh, uh, you know, Julio's leaving a big uh, hole. I think, uh, you know, Calvin Ridley stands to have an increased share. But I think Kyle Pitts, above all, is is going to come in and is just going to wreck. I, I mean, mm. you know, yeah. I, well, you know, he still has Hayden Hurst to deal with. Um, and it's uh, it's been it's been a while. It's been a minute that a, yeah. at a rookie tight end has come straight in. And just direct the league. Um, I'm thinking, to be honest with you, I really think that the winner from that was not Calvin Ridley. Because Calvin Ridley, to me, showed that he couldn't handle double teams. Can I say his Uh, name? uh, Sure. You're you're talking about Zacchaeus, right? No, I'm talking about Russell Gage. Uh, He was on pace for 140 targets um, right from the bye week on of last year. He was on pace for 140 targets, 90 receptions, 1,000 yards, and 8 TDs. Is he signed? uh, uh, well, yeah, he's he's with Atlanta. Yeah, he's the uh, he's probably going to be the guy who's going to, in my opinion, is going to be the one who's going to win the most out of this. Uh, you think he's going to so be he's, out? He's, he's, he's become their their wide receiver one is now Russell Gage, is what you're saying? No, I'm saying the wide 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 receiver two is not going to be the first look, but I'm not sure if Calvin Ridley can handle the uh, double teams or, I agree or with, the best one. I, I agree with the amigo. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but and I also agree with you, um, Connor. That's the other one that I was thinking. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus yeah. yeah. Zacchaeus, yes, yes. Absolutely right. Olamide, Zacchaeus, right. Because he did well. But I pulled out Russell Gage because I had those stats immediately available to me. So, well, how yeah. about this? How about this? The, I, who, the real winner might be is Young Wei Koo. Ooh, oh, that's, Young, that's a good take. That's a good take. Young Wei always wins, though, dude. Young Wei's yeah. my boy, dude. <laughs> Yeah, that guy. Oh my gosh, I can't believe uh, the, the the previous host, uh, um, Ethan. He dropped he dropped Koo, and man, <laughs> and he got mad at Connor for picking him up. It's like, what are you? Uh, what? what you're not you're supposed to like what? Like you dropped him, so he's yours forever. He wasn't. He wasn't mad. He un- he understood, and in the end, it worked out because I dropped something that he ended up picking up. I think. Yeah, or yeah, I dropped yeah. something that you picked up. Uh, could That's been. the yeah. thing about fantasy football, man. You and your friends all eat each other's sloppy seconds. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, and it came, and it came out yeah. that New e- New England never really had serious interest in him, and Seattle didn't really want to pay huge money, so yeah. that's why he landed with the Titans. All right, um, Angry Rogers. Let's, let's go and talk about him. A report just came out today uh, that he's skipping mandatory mini camp that begins tomorrow. Um, the Packers could find him nearly a hundred thousand dollars, or just make an excuse. Yeah, you know, as an excused absence. Uh, Jordan Love, Blake Bortles will handle most of the touches. So thoughts on thoughts on that? Any of you guys want to jump in? Say anything on that? Bortles. <laughs> we call him garbage time Bortles in our uh, in our uh, standard league because. Uh, I got a guy that always picks him up and is like, this is the guy. I don't care. Because <laughs> what is he, like I'm related get, to him or something? <laughs> no, he's like, I'm going to get 20, tw- at least 22 points out of him, and it's always going to come at the end of the game because they're just going to be throwing like nuts. He might throw – he's he's going to throw you a couple touchdowns a game, but he's still going to have to throw a lot. of. I mean, he can throw a lot of yards. He can throw some touchdowns, but he's just so mistake – prone that, that everybody overlooks him but my buddy will just overlook him josh is who he is josh, josh. right now call him josh call it out josh right now josh turn right now li- to the front desk please turn the lights down this is this is a rock concert yeah. josh josh <laughs> can i have to ask you to pull over son yeah sir if you could if you just step out of the car real quick yeah yeah oh so, um yeah, he, he likes Bortles. Uh, I think uh, it's going to be a toss-up as to who's going to get that. Uh, it's just a QB. It's a QB struggle in Green Bay because I think Rodgers is going to sit out or retire. You know, he's going to retire. What about what about oh, the, the guy they drafted, though? You, you really think love? Bortles has a, start, uh, has a chance over Love? I mean, I, like I said, it's going to be – they're going to be struggling. They're going to be – I feel I think, like they just signed Bortles to spite him, man. Spike, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they brought in what would uh, tantamount to be the backup quarterback to Jordan Love. I'm pretty sure so, I said this like a month ago. That's like when you break up with a girl and then you like. Yeah. Right, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. We know what that's called. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> Every guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, you know, I mean, I think uh, Jordan Love is still going to be on, on um, you know, really uh, – light ground here because he's a rookie and Bortles is there. Bortles will be able to, you know, kind of, I think what will happen is Jordan Love will get him in trouble. Blake Bortles will try to get him out. They're going to have an average year. I think, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, what's his name? Devonte Adams is likely going to suffer huge. Uh, I think he falls in the draft uh, at least a couple rounds based on, you know, Rogers retiring or just sitting out. Is that fair? I mean, I mean, because he's still a talented player, you know. Oh, yeah, I think he he falls to the third and fourth rounds instead of like you know late first, early second. I'd probably be very yeah. Allen Robinson esque. Mm, yeah. Could be, yeah. So, uh, what about Aaron Jones and Robert Tunyon? Ah, uh, I mean, I think every I, I I said you know I mean the, he's the quarterback's the bus driver, okay? And if that bus driver's not driving, nobody's getting home. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you, you have, you being a Dallas Cowboy fan would absolutely know that after that horrible year you guys had last year, mm-hmm. you did not have a, <laughs> you guys went through it. So yeah. Yeah. You know all about it. Um, well, 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 let's be fair. You guys as Houston Nash, uh, rock, whoever fans, the Texans fans, um, and the Broncos and the Broncos, uh, for you bandwagon fans. Uh, I think you guys know exactly what's going on, but we'll cover that in rumors. 
Okay. Um, the uh, so Cam Newton suffered a slight bone bruise in his hand when he hit a player's helmet with his hand and couldn't and couldn't finish practice. Now it's not considered a major in, uh, injury, but uh, this might get you know the rookie on the field sooner than later. So there's there's uh, something to keep a mind eye out for that. Uh, DJ Shark has added seven pounds of muscle after being challenged by head coach Urban Meyer. And dude, this this quote I love this quote. This is why I brought it up because I just wanted to say this quote. Uh, Urban Meyer speaking about um, DJ Shark says he's a big guy playing playing little last year. <laughs> you know, so you know, so a big guy playing like a little guy last year. I thought that was pretty funny. So, uh, but he says he's committed. You know, I mean, it's the whole rhetoric you hear. You know, I'm not. You know, that's gonna be my floor. That's not gonna be me again. Yeah, I mean, it's stuff you always hear in the offseason. Um, people, uh, right? I heard that, or it's been a shock through the fantasy um, world that Cooper Cup came out and said he's doing really well. Um, and I actually saw it in the ADP and I started reflecting it. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Don't forget. That last year, the dude has bursitis. Bursitis is something that doesn't go away. Just kind of, you always have it. And then he also suffered his uh, that knee injury that knocked him out for a while. So, so even though there's Stafford in the room, watch out for for, for uh, drafting Cup. And right here, this is going uh, this is going to go your your way uh, right into your uh, right into your backyard here, uh, Barack. Um, Blake Jarwin expected to be ready for training camp, and I only bring him up because uh, I. Last year, there was a lot of pre-hype, uh, pre-draft hype about him that you know he, uh, he's going to be you know breakout and everything, and so it's easy to think oh. that that uh, that's going to happen this year. Uh, but now with Dalton Schultz popping, I, I don't, I think they're going to share. Do you do you agree on that? I mean, you're you're yeah. inside Dallas, so you you know it more than I do. Uh, listen, more than inside on the Dallas sports thing. Um, I also play a video game called Madden. <laughs> okay. Nice. And that dude can't Name stay dropper. healthy. He can't stay healthy. <laughs> and Madden, even in Madden, he can't stay healthy. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh. oh, that's rough. That's a hard yeah. knock life right there, man. Holy yeah. mackerel! Uh, I made it. Through, I made it through like five or six seasons with the Cowboys. Uh, I ended up picking um, uh, my tight end. Uh, who's my tight end again? <laughs> Blake Jarwin? No, Kelsey not Blake Schultz? Jarwin. No, no, no. Uh, Kit, uh, what's his, what's it? Uh, Kelsey. Ah, Kelsey, yes. I ended up uh, uh, trading for Kelsey. Oh, no, no. He was a free agent. I signed Kelsey like in the year 2025 or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, no, there's just there's 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 not a lot of hope in the tight end game for the for the Cowboys right now, which is one of the reasons why Jerry Jones had a hard on basically for Kyle Pitts. Yeah, you're the first. Yeah, you're you're the first to bring him up on the show. You're the first to bring up Kyle Pitts. Absolutely, I'll give you I'll give you props (laughs) on that. Um, Connor, Connor, uh, just real quick, dude. This is Jameis Winston is is said to be the one that's going to be the uh, getting the starter. And that uh, he's having problems hitting Michael Thomas in oh, practice. Yeah, yeah, no shit. Yeah, yeah. Is is that is that I mean, is that a concern? It was. I mean, what would you think? Uh, no, I'm Con- not concerned. That sounds pretty normal for Jameis. I mean, like, if if you know you want him to be the starter, yeah, it's concerning. But I don't think anyone thinks that's going to happen. Okay. Yeah, I was I was just curious about that. You know, I mean, it's. Um, so Michael Thomas right now, like in a ten man, he's going like in the third or fourth round. Is that a good good spot for that guy? I mean, do you think he's going to produce like Michael Thomas? I mean, what do you guys think? I think uh, it's a drop. I yeah, he'll try. Um, I think it's a big if. I mean, you know, obviously we know Michael Thomas's conditioning is good. Uh, it's very easy for him to breathe because of how big his nose is. So we're not going to have to worry about him getting tired at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. My my big my big thing is it's like, I think it's a fair price. I don't think that he's a, a proven asset, but that's that's a fair range so he's for where a strong, he's at. A strong wide wide receiver too. Then is that what you're saying? Yeah, you shouldn't be drafting him as your wide receiver one. You should have another okay. guy that you trust in that's like a whole tier above in terms of like stability. McLaurin or Thomas, if you have a choice. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one's tough, man. That's, that's, that's like if I want to shoot I, myself in the balls with a dick. It's going to hurt either way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, you have another ball. <laughs> so yeah, that's one? true, but what if it goes through one into the other? <laughs> well, that's poor planning. 
<laughs> yeah, but that'd be better than shooting one minute falling out. <laughs> so who? So so you said Thomas. I'm going Thomas. Okay, uh, Connor. Who would you say? Uh, scary Terry. Yeah, I like I like the upside. Yeah, yeah I th- I, th- I I'm right there with with you because of uh, the Fitz Fitz uh, Patrick. Fitz Patrick. Fitz Patrick. I don't Fitz you know. Magic. I think you're dealing with just about the same quarterback with Fitzpatrick and and with uh, uh, what's Winston. Winston, yeah, you're about uh, right. You're about you know, right. I mean, because you got a guy who, who you Winston. I, I would never advise he get it, even in his heyday. I mean, maybe he. Listen, I'm just gonna say this. He's mm-hmm. he's just so mistake prone. I never I never paid attention to any team he was on. Okay, mm-hmm. and I was just like. Tampa Bay box. I was like, stay away from that team. Now mm-hmm. that's a different story. But Ryan Fitzpatrick, how long is it before Ryan Fitzpatrick gets sat? You know what I mean? Yeah, but the guy, like, the the young kid they have that played in the playoff games last year, he had like everyone has eyes for Scary Terry. Scary Terry's that kind of white. He's he's like a. I I think Larry Fitzgerald is a great comp to him because he's a hard worker. You know, he can he can eat up yards and he connects with pretty much any quarterback he plays with. I I, I think he's fine. It's just Fitzpatrick gives him that great start to start off the year. Yeah. That's what you're banking on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, what um, where where do you where do you pick up McLaurin then? And what round? I think he's cheaper. I think he's cheaper than Thomas. That's the that's the great thing. He's like no, a, to, uh, to, uh, the ADP uh, McLaurin is above. Uh, Thomas. Oh, it adjusted. Mm-hmm. Fuck, mm-hmm. man. People yeah. Don't... One thing that you mentioned though, Brock, is that, uh, and I just like just thought about it just a moment because you said Jameis Winston and the Bucks, and you're like, forget it. But I remember whenever Jameis Winston was on the Bucks, uh, he threw to the tight ends a lot, and there was a t- uh, tight end Troutman that uh, the Saints last year they actually uh, traded up to get this this tight end, and they let Jared yeah. Cook go for a reason. So I'm wondering if a sleeper is this Troutman dude, you know, if, if Winston is the is the dude, you know, so that's well, something I'm, I... I'm not going to be pay, paying attention to the tight end uh, position because I own Travis Kelsey. I, uh, I really like the thought, Brian. I'm going to probably use it because yeah, I'm hey, assuming he's, he goes undrafted. Yeah. Oh, oh, dude, it's not even like, no. There you go. I mean, he, like, you have to scroll, 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 <laughs> scroll, scroll, and then get frustrated and type in his name and find him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's that's how you have to do it, dude, yeah. Uh, so, uh, Gus Edwards, man, he agreed to a two-year, $10 million contract Good extension. Him. Good pay, but, Gus. But the Ravens offensive coordinator, Greg Roman, said this offseason they are working to expand J.K. Dobbins' role in the passing attack. His exact quote was, he's got the skill set and the talent to really include him as a viable weapon in the passing game. That's a big focus of what we're doing right now. That's that's the quote. And, uh, you know, of course, everybody, everybody knows how much Jackson loves to throw to the running backs, you know. But uh, so what are y'all's thoughts on, it, on, on that? Um, uh, Brock, jump in. Oh, okay. Brock, Brock, Brock put the bullshit button. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a little bit of it. Yeah. Okay. So that's your thing. Okay, Connor. Do you do you uh, concur with her on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, it just seems like standard operating procedure. Uh, if if you really think about it, they drafted uh, the Dobinator to replace Mark Ingram, and mm-hmm. when they had Mark Ingram, they still had Gus the Bus, and they had Justice Hill. Um, so I mean, they still have Justice Hill on the team. So now they're kind of just moving away from a three-headed monster, just going to uh, you know. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have you know the Dobinator doing the passing catching stuff all all that and then Gus they like to bring him in between the twenties he gets a lot of red zone looks they're definitely yeah. keeping him for that that's why they paid him and, he's and that makes pass protection and so. that makes uh, J.K. Dobbins kind of uh, like I mean you hear this news and you get excited like oh man that's a rock solid RB two um, is that a, is that a feeling or no, no I think he's a better dynasty play than anything else at this point or keeper. Okay, cool. All right, and uh, now uh, and of course you're saying, w- you're saying you're saying J.K. Dobbins is a keeper. Yeah. That's yeah. That's the uh, that was the last thing he stated. Uh, as a as a if you if you're in a keeper league like you are. Well, I'm gonna, wait, I'm in years you can league. only keep one guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, di- I'd say dynasty. It depends on how many guys you can keep. I've seen. I've heard of uh, keeper leagues that you you keep like several players. That's that's I've what I'm three. saying. Yeah, three. That's yeah. the most I've heard. Yeah. 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 But um. Well, depending. But on if the it's three. 
Yeah, if it's a three, I guess you could you could do that. But yeah, they're, they're, it's actually that news has shot him up into I think like the uh, uh, fourth round, third round, and fourth round. Yeah, in the last mock draft that I did. Yeah, I will look after him. I will yeah. Look after him, yeah. Well, I mean that doesn't mean mess. It doesn't mean anything to you, man, because uh, you do standards. So uh, who cares? Well, like cares? I said, I mean, yeah, who cares? I mean, what I'm saying is Lamar Jackson's the real runner there. So uh-huh. I mean, true, you know. true that preach on that. Yeah. And the last bit of inform, uh, last bit of, of uh, I guess information I have is uh, head WTF head coach Ron Rivera stated last week that he expects Antonio Gibson to make a big jump in year two. Now, of course, the week before, which we talked about, was that it was reported that uh, they wanted him to run more routes, and now this info. So the question is that everybody's thinking on their minds so that you guys can crack the code is is Antonio Gibson the next? Christian McCaffrey. No. I mean, Even with the Ron Rivera connection? No? Uh, no? No? Uh, no? Okay. Well, that was quick on you. How about... <laughs> yeah, my build-up was just like a me. Okay. How about, yeah, how about you... Uh, um, how, how about you, Connor? Come on, man. Make, make, give, me, give us a payoff. I'll go, I'll go halvesies. He's, he's McCaff McCaff light. Okay. So, in what, so what do you mean? Like he's not going to... He's a half McCaff. Exactly, <laughs> half McCaff. That's his nickname now. Half, half yes. Decaf. Absolutely. Decaf McCaff. <laughs> Decaf McCaff. There we go. That, that's funny. That's funny. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm I'm of the feeling that um, Antonio Gibson is yes, I think he's going to do well, but I think there's a lot of other mouths to feed there. And uh, Fitzpatrick likes throwing downfield more than he likes checking, you know. So, like, if it was Alex Smith, that's why he did so well last year. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to be with uh, with Fitzpatrick. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll stay with the nickname. It also but, depends all right. on if he's taking reps out of the backfield or in the slot. Right. Well, I mean, that's another, see, that's another thing. Like, Curtis Samuel's there, so he might, he might take away from, from some of that I stuff. From what I understand, it looks like Gibson – could have the potential to take more reps in the slot than McCaffrey did because I mean he would do it sometimes but he would do it sometimes as like a gimmicky thing you know like oh that's yeah McCaffrey, McCaffrey. I just think Curtis Samuel's gonna mess things up I think I yeah. know you do you don't yeah. like him because you had DJ Moore last year uh, <laughs> had had yes yes no it's yes. just Only, like I dislike yeah. Deontay Johnson even though he did nothing wrong it's because last year I had Chase Claypool and Juju Furcher. You hate Furcher. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. We're, we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to the meat of the of the episode. But wow. before we do that, uh, let's go, well, like to go ahead and take a moment and uh, thank the supporters of the show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Connor, you want, hey, you sound like you're, you're pumped up, man. Why don't you Woo-hoo! take the first one? Yeah. Brother? Sports Host, the premier global app. The great thing about sports hosts, guys, is you could you could be into a sport and you're like, man, this is no way. There's like an app. Yeah, sports host has it. If it's like disc golf, if you're into putt putt golf, if you're into you know underwater polo, sports host has it. They also have all the good. I mean, the uh, you know, the other sports too, like football, baseball, basketball, all that good stuff. Download it in the link below. Sports hosts. Sweet. And Barack, if I asked you, man, I was like, man, I want to I want to find me an app that has Andrew B's vocal sounds, the bill, the business knowledge broker show, the Soul Brothers show. What's on your mind with Aunt Boogie and blame it on the boogie. Which app can I do? Could I download that would give me all that information? Well, um, based on recent information, sports hosts. High High Volume Music Radio app, man. Yeah, so yeah, check them out online, highvolumemusicradio.com. But uh, yeah, the pride of Sunnyside, High Volume Sorry Music to let Radio. You down there. Sorry to let you down. No, I just won't depend on you next time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, yeah, so smart you're out man. of it. I was just a smart try- man. I'll just I'll try to include you. You know, I'll try to like throw you the ball and you uh you know shut yourself in the foot. But hey, that's okay. <laughs> The Pride of Sunnyside, yes. The high the volume Pride music radio, make sure to download it. Yeah, so if it ain't high volume, it ain't loud enough. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. Let's take so this is uh, your brainchild, Brock. So you, uh, this is the one that we uh, we we had a, uh, a a run through already, kind of. So we kind of got a good running start on this. So once you take it from here, my brother. Okay, so uh, sh- shoot the gaps uh, first edition of Super Bold Predictions. Uh, I I'm looking at the the. the we talked about uh, the new schedule had come out uh, when we did this 
in, in the dress rehearsal. And, uh, <laughs> we, we had an idea to really focus on one player per week in the first few weeks and we'll like go down the road. But we looked at the first four weeks. I, I looked and I picked out who I thought was going to have a standout game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So from weeks one through four, just one person and what exactly they were going to, you know, how they were going to produce. So what I'd like to do is, you know, I'll just take a couple minutes uh, and I'll run right through. I'll run right through the, <laughs> do you, uh, the do you still have your feather. Do you still have your feather? I do. Yeah, there we go. See, that was what you missed out. What you guys missed out was that right there, the funky feather. That kind of gives them the power well, to see into the future. <laughs> I used this on a, a Julio Jones prediction uh, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. didn't work out, so I'm looking at the feather a little bit more. <laughs> uh, the, the, the super team in Denver is not happening, huh? A little bit more of a skeptic than I was. Anyway, so I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm going to go through the first four weeks. You guys take your as, as I'm talking. Yeah, and then if you guys have, uh, you know, you, you know, objections or, or accolades, you know, feel free to chime in. Uh, you're free to give us your, you know, four players that are going to stand out each week. Uh, if you have them ready, I assume you, you do. Is that correct? Uh, yes, I do. And when, if I disagree with you, I'm going to I'm going to huff at you like you hear like in, in the British par Parliament. You know, <laughs> So need to put more cocaine in the sauce. <laughs> as, as soon as I get done, as soon as I get done, then you guys, you know, lay in. That's what right? she said. Lay in, lay in, and 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 so then we'll go. We'll take turns. Uh, so I'll start. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> okay. So week one. I had a whole, I had a whole thing. If you don't, if you guys recall, yeah, man, yeah, yeah you did. Man, it was, you did. It was, it, was, it was like a I had a song, and I think, know, I, I think you can channel it if you really focus. Well, of I course you're can. right. I think uh, you're right. I think you're right. Um, you, you know, we had just a great, great, great uh, gelling chemistry that that session. Let's try to get it back, won't we? You guys want to get it back? Let's do it. Let me get the lube. Try for it, man. Try for it, dude. <laughs> Week one. Cards <laughs> at Titans. Okay. DeAndre Hopkins is going to stand out. He's going to have three touchdowns, 122, 122 yards. Okay. It's going to be a six target game for him against a Titans defense, despite, despite being on the road. Why? Because Titans are ranked one of the worst defenses. And, you know, this newly supercharged Cardinals team. It's going to take it to them, and D-Hop will be the, the recipient there. So make sure you draft him and play him wisely. Of course, you you, know, you play him every week. Yep. Week two. Hold on. <laughs> week two. Falcons at Bucks. Gronkowski is going to pick up his first two touchdowns of the season. Okay. He's going to get 35 yards on four targets. It's a division game. They're playing against the uh, worst-ranked visiting Super Bowl champs, okay? Uh, Brady and uh, Gronk's connection is going to, uh, you know, pick right back up where, where it did from the Super Bowl. So, so uh, you said Atlanta, you said Atlanta is the worst, uh, one of the worst uh, defenses. What I said. Okay, but you said it's, it's Gronk, right? Gronk, Gronk. is going to pick okay. up two touchdowns, okay? <laughs> 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 two touchdowns. <laughs> Week three. All right. Chargers at Chiefs. Okay. You're you're Travis Kelsey gets two touchdowns on ten targets and eighty yards. Kelsey's, as you guys know, a red red zone demon. All right. Chiefs, uh uh let's see here. Uh, where's third? Yeah, yeah. The spec <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh Kansas City is, is just gonna wreak havoc on the Chargers. They're one of the third worst defenses. Uh, you you know how it goes. I think it's right. going to be an exciting game. I, I think that Her Herbear is going to take it to them. Yeah. Hey, 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 man. I got to hold my tongue. You got to hold my your tongue. Oh, my bad. Week four. Okay. This is more of a spotlight than anything. It's Bucks at Patriots. It's su Sunday night. Okay. Tom Brady. It's going to complete the super double cuck by going back to Gillette Stadium. 
mm-hmm. despite the Pats being a top 10 defense. Mm-hmm. He's going to throw five, maybe six touchdowns, yep. 275 yards. All Belichick will be able to do is sit in the corner in that dark corner as his his ex gets tripled back. Uh, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. So week four, oh, yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Get violated, maybe. Yeah, 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 exactly. He's going to get super cucked. Super cucked. <laughs> okay. All right. Those All are right. my bold, super bold predictions. All right. Do you have anything to say about? Them? Do you remember them? I wrote them down. If you didn't, um, uh, Connor, I've you know week one D Hop. You can't. I can't disagree with that. I remember that one. Uh, yeah, I, I'm down with that. I can't say anything about yeah. that. Uh, week two, the Gronk um, at Atlanta. I huffed at it because <laughs> I, I think it's gonna. I. Yeah, because I think if anybody's gonna come out of that, it's gonna be Godwin. I think Godwin's gonna be the one who's going to really feast. And I on say that. Mike Evans on that one. Okay, see, so there we go. There we go. It's kind of like a hodgepodge. Actually, maybe we should say Tom Brady then. It's going to do well. Uh, week three, uh, Kelsey at the Chargers. Okay, I <laughs> like that because I think it's going to be Patrick Mahomes. I think it's going to be a spread out. I think it's going to be Hill. I think it's going to be Kelsey. I think you're even going to see a little bit of Eclair well, action. Listen, I, I think it's going to be Eclair. I Whoa. did say I did say they're the third worst defense, and they're going up against Kansas City. I mean, it's a, a division game once again, and we're talking about spreading it around. I'm just saying, Kelsey is going to have a two touchdown game, 80 yards. I mean, I he's, can see he's Jared, I, I can see Jared <laughs> Cook having a very big game. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, all right. And then week four, uh, Bucks at Pats with Tom Brady. Dude, come on, man. I'm not going to go against that. I mean, that's that seems like it's bad juju to go against that, you know. So, yeah, because the uh, the witch doctor man might uh, might might snipe me. Um, Connor, do you have any any problems with with his prediction on Tom Brady? No, I'm I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna bet against him. Yeah, me either. Me either. So, do you, okay. Uh, do you want to go and take the next uh, the next round, uh, uh, Connor? The next, yeah. Yeah, week one, week two, week three, week four. Well, I th- I, I kind of said my guys already. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Did you catch him, Brock? No, he didn't. No, I yeah, said I. I oh, well, I said um. Oh no! So the Cardinals. Okay, Brian now. Okay, the Cardinals are playing the Titans, so I don't want to take Julio Jones if you already had him. I don't have Julio Jones. You don't have Julio you, Jones for week one? No, 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 you, no, 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 I don't have him. No, okay, I, have, well, I have somebody I think, else. I have somebody else. I, I think that the Cardinals, uh, their offense is going to be good, but, you know, I mm-hmm. don't think their defense is going to be able to answer what the Titans have in town. Uh, so you're taking the Titans defense in week one? No, I'm taking Julio <laughs> Jones in week one. Julio Jones in week one. I think that yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that he's gonna have at least at least eight targets his first game. Okay. And a and a, t- and a touchdown. Okay. Week two. Eight so, targets, a touchdown. All right. Eight targets and a touchdown. I'm not making a commitment to yards. All right. Now for week two. <laughs> For week two, I'm still going with Mike Evans. I think he's he's going okay. to be the guy that eats. Okay, okay, okay. We we discussed that one. Okay, cool. For week right. three, Jared Cook, like I said, I, I think I think he's going to eat against the Chiefs and also Eclair. I think Eclair is going to eat against the Chargers. Um. So so you're saying that on week three is, is it Jared Cook or or Eclair? I think both of those guys are going to do good. It's, ah. it's a twofer. Twofer. <laughs> I'm definitely chiming I'm glad we thought of this. We're definitely gonna remember this. Yeah, that's great. Go okay, go to week four, man. Ah, fuck, bro. What was the week four game that Barack talked about? You don't have to pick on the games that I picked on. But I want to. It's fun. No shit. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like when someone someone picks a number and you do one less and then you get it right. You're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Price is right. Price is wrong, bitch. Yeah, they can't be betting a dollar here, bro. Price is wrong, bitch. (laughs) All right. No, but seriously, what was it? What was because I I, I had someone. (laughs) Tom Brady at uh, Patriots. Oh. Well, they didn't. <laughs> no, I did. 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 No, 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 no. I'm picking. <laughs> well, now that I heard the now that I heard the news about um Cam Newton don't not doing good, I'm picking the Bucks D. Okay. Yeah, you can oh. do that. Yeah, I, I think the Patriots right, yeah. offense ain't gonna do too hot. Okay. 
All right. Okay. So, uh, so uh, Brock, week one, Julio Jones at Tennessee. Do you think that? Uh, what, do you have any uh, any things to say? I, that? I mean, uh, outside of it just not being a very standout, I picked DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, what did I say? He'd get three, two touchdowns, three mm-hmm. touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, that's that's. We're talking about super bold predictions, not something that we know is possibly. Now going this happen. is bold sure. because a lot of people could say, "Oh, Julio doesn't have it. Julio is not the man anymore." Julio. When I say, "Well, I mean, you, know? you, you, you could argue that," and and but I'm eight saying targets, the man's going to get eight, eight targets, targets and and one touchdown. You know, super bold would be two touchdowns. Okay. Yeah. Mike it's a, Evans. To run first def- uh, offense, man. Mike Evans could Mike get two Evans. touchdowns. Mike Evans, Mike Evans is gonna like potentially be a two touchdown guy every week. I just, I, I singled out Gronkowski because he's not gonna eat for most of the year anyway. You know what I mean? But I just thought, hey, he's definitely gonna eat in week I two. I don't think he's going to though. That's that's the thing. You, I mean, but how can he not against the Falcons? He was okay. He's. He's oh, I can tell you exactly how. Yeah, because with the, I think it's Godwin because I think Godwin's going to explode for a couple of touchdowns mm-hmm. and then they're going to then they're going to do the the corral of running backs, you know. So, but I think that the way I feel about Godwin, I think is what Connor feels like Evans. He's going to be the one who's going to. That's just it. That's just it. They're going to get so far ahead, uh, you know, and be we'll running. It, well, yeah, you can run, but you're Tom Brady. Why not pass? Come on, this is like Tom Brady. Uh, anyway, listen, he's he's gonna throw, and it'll probably be towards the end of that game that uh, Gronkowski gets his second touchdown. It, it's okay. at it's at it's at Tampa Bay, so they're not gonna be throwing the whole game. They're, you're probably thinking about maybe the first half they're gonna be throwing. The second half is gonna be time time management. Y- yes, and and what better person to help time manage than a check down to Gronkowski? I mean, or to or or to Leonard Fournette or to Ronald Jones Jr. Sure, yes, or you can do, or, you you know, can do that. But I mean, all the other ones. I mean, hey, what better team to try out rekindling the romance they had in 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 New England than against one of the worst defenses in 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 the league? Hey, man. Okay, so how do you feel about uh, Cook, uh, Jared Cook at KC in Week Three? Um, man, you don't like any of mine. <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm not saying uh, – you didn't really state what he was going to do. You know, I mean, like, is he going to get three touchdowns, two touchdowns? I mean, is it not, one touchdown? No, he's not going to get three touchdowns. I think he's going to get at least 15 points. So, at least a touchdown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, 15 points. So, in PPR speak? Golly, oh, yeah. that's a lot of yards, man, if it's only one touchdown. Yeah, yeah. but look, I mean – or, I mean, or he um, could get two touch. No, I just I think yeah, that's that, a super bold. That's a super bold prediction. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, that's I, a super I think bold he's going to exploit the Chiefs' defense. I think that they're going to try going after Hair Bear, and I think the Hair Bear is going to use him as a safety net. Yeah, I, I I can see that, but I mean he's going to be on the sidelines doing that. I mean he's not a downfield guy. The only way that Cook's going to be any kind of trouble. Is going to be in the in the in the in the red zone and and really you know I mean I, I do see San Diego getting to the red zone against the Chiefs I mean they're not yeah. the best defense uh, so so yeah it, it could happen that is a super bold prediction I will give you that one and mm-hmm. I will be looking for Jared Cook in Week Three nice it's also a super stoned prediction in my opinion <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 hey I've I've been on him yeah. for months I've been on him for months right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Is it my turn? Okay. Let me go and take the, take this thing over. All right. So we got uh, week one. My Super Bowl prediction is actually James Robinson at Houston. I think James Robinson is going to have a great game. The first game of the season. They're not going to turn it over to Etienne. You know, right off the bat. They're definitely not going to need to pass because Houston, I think, is going to be one of, if not the worst defense in the in the uh, whole NFL. So. Or yeah, I think it's I think it's going to be uh, James Robinson's day. I think he's going to do fantastic. And uh, of course, a little bonus if you defense to stream stream Jacksonville. They're playing against Houston, the one that's going to be one of the worst offenses. So yeah, so that's that is my Super Bowl for number one. Number two is going to be who is it going to be? Who's it going to be? I think it's going to be T.J. Hawkinson at Green Bay on Monday Night Football. Yeah, this is a this right here is a rivalry game. Okay, so they're going to be at Green Bay. Green Bay is is disheveled. If it's if what Brock and his funky feather comes comes to pass, if it actually happens, where Aaron, uh, where Angry Rogers does retire as the Jordan Love Show or the Blake Bortles Show, 
Holy mackerel. Yeah, dude. They're going to be just discombobulated. And I what think that TJ... Do? What's he going to do? What's he gonna oh, do? TJ, oh, TJ Hawkinson. You're, dude, you're talking about a three-touchdown game on this guy. I would say three... Tu- you're going to do about three. Uh, <laughs> hey, go ahead. That's fine, man. Because he's the number one... Um, he is the number one pass catcher uh, for uh, the uh, Detroit Lions, so I think he's going to do well. But we'll, we'll, right, we'll huff at right. that. Yeah, we'll huff at that. We'll huff at that. But that's uh, so I, I say three touchdowns. Okay, cool, cool. All right, number three. What about James Robinson in week one? How, what what does he do? Uh, James Robinson week one. I think he's going to have um, he's going to have two touchdowns and uh, 150 yards. That's what I think he's going to have. Yeah, so that's what, I, that's what I'm going to say that he's going to have. Week three. All right, so let's take a look here. This is the week whenever you are happy that you drafted Kenny Galladay. Mr. Galladay is going to come out of the out of the stall, the stall going about two touchdowns for, I would say, let's give it an even 100 for him. Yeah, because he's going to be playing. It's going to be at... Uh, it's going to be Atlanta at New- at the Giants. So it's going to be a home game against Atlanta. I think that Kenny Galladay is going to have a lot of fun that day. So that's going to that's my week uh, that's my week 3, week 4. All right. So what I'm looking at week 4, I think that uh, week 4 is going to be ah I do. I can't. I can't go past this guy, dude. I, this is the guy I love. I love this man. It's an easy shot, but dude, it's somebody I love, Stephon Diggs, man, playing against the Houston Texans and Buffalo. Oh my gosh, dude! It's gonna be a four touchdowns. Diggs is gonna get four touchdowns. I'm. I'm already telling you, four touchdowns for Mr. Diggs on Week Four. All right, man. It, four for four. Hit me. Wendy's. Hit me. Come on. Huff right. me. Come on. Huff. Right. Huff. Right. Huff. I, I ain't huffing at that. That could happen. All right. Well. I think, I think I think Diggs. See, I mean, it's easy to pick Houston and Atlanta as some of the worst ones. Uh, you know, those are those are sort of kind of the gimmies that you would think. Yeah, it's very likely that that uh, Diggs would score four touchdowns. You know, at he with Houston in town. Uh, uh, you know, or James Robinson again. You're picking on your own home team, Houston. Two touchdowns, 150 yards. Um, I like the Hawkinson pick the most because. I mean, it's a super bold prediction because who knows what's going to happen. Dude, with Robinson, yeah, yeah, come yeah. on, man. Okay, no, easy no, I mean, no, no, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, no. I'm saying I'm not saying Robinson is not a super bold prediction. I mean, that is two touchdowns, 150 yards. It, Dude, it's, that's super it's fucking super bold. bold. Prediction. They drafted a whole fu- other fucking ass running back, bro. Well, he 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 evened it out with saying, "Hey, I mean, it 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 it, it, it ten spirit is not going to take the reins from the first game, but but then again, he might." I think that is kind of a kind of crazy out there kind of prediction. I'm not going to say what crazy, but I think the best one that makes the most sense is Galladay, uh, you know, getting two touchdowns, 100 yards against Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah, again, terrible defense, you know. But, uh, yeah, no, I think I think the Hawkinson three touchdown uh, with Green Bay is – that one is one of your, mo- your bolder predictions. Uh, okay, I, I, I disagree. Gall- the Galladay uh, prediction is pretty bold because they still have um, – presumably they'll have Saquon Barkley against a terrible uh, Atlanta defense, and there's no reason why Saquon they – Saquon Barkley opens it up for Galladay, who's now what officially their, what, first? Uh, oh, yeah, he's, wide he's, he's, he's wide receiver one, right. Yeah. But – you're talking about two touchdowns. I mean, that means that they're going to keep throwing at, uh, throwing to him after they, he gets one touchdown, after Barkley gets another touchdown. You know, so, man. That's just how bad Atlanta is. Yeah. yeah it's and, on, the and, def- on the defensive side. And same thing with Stephon Diggs. You know, I mean, again, why would they run uh, Zach Moss and Singletary, you know, or um, or their new toy, Brita? You know, I mean, why would they do that? No, that's why I said four touchdowns. That's why that's, I mean, you're saying I'm picking on you're my own team. Diggs. Yes. Touchdowns, Diggs. Yes. You know, yes. Yeah, that's, yes. That's yes. definitely bold. Yes. Yes. I think it's very, very yes. Bold. And also James Robinson, man, because of ETN Spirit. I love that nickname, by the way, dude. You, that's awesome. ETN, love it, love it. Yeah, dude. I mean, that guy. I don't. He's he's gonna be a rookie. Okay, they're not. He's going to be the pass yep. catching back. The re- reason why they're saying that he's going to do so well is because the, um, they're going to be behind. They're not going to be behind against Houston. And it's going to be James Robinson coming out, and that's a big bold thing because James Robinson is slipping underneath. I'm not. Hey, listen, I'm Houston not disagreeing here. with you really that any of these are bold predictions, but the superest bold of your first four weeks, I think, is Hawkinson. Hawkinson, uh, keep on hawking in a free world. Uh, <laughs> 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 nice. Nice. Look at you, dude. Just flowing left and right. Connor, <laughs> pick me apart, man. Pick me apart. I don't have a whole lot of hate for your predictions, Brian. I, I all see them happening. 
Ah, I mean, so honest, then, if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm being real, uh, Galladay, that's probably the one that I'm the most eh, on, on. And I, I mean, it's not that I don't see it because I totally see the pathway that you're talking about. Galladay is the type of cat he catches a post going over the middle, he takes it back to the house. So you mm-hmm. know, before you got it, he's already got sixty and one. Then they could get into the red zone. He goes up, makes a contested catch. Now you're looking at two and seven and seventy five. Right, mm-hmm. so I I totally see the pathway that you're talking about. The problem is you have so many other guys there on the Giants. Like they have a lot of wide receivers. I don't know what Daniel Jones's connection is like with Kenny Galladay. So by week one, if there's like a connection, I could totally you know take my words back and I'm like Brian, like you're totally right. But I, there, you know, there's scenarios in which. Sterling Shepard's the guy that eats. There's scenarios mm-hmm. in which it's just the Saquon Barkley show. There's situations in which Daniel Jones runs it in for a couple touchdowns. There's a lot of things that could happen. Yeah. The um yeah, the here's the thing, like with Con- Kenny Galladay, um I'm I'm l I don't know how what to think about him because it the the um comparison between Diggs going to a new team and how uh Josh Allen was viewed Whenever Diggs got there, and then Galladay going to a new team, and how Daniel Jones is being viewed, you know, um, it just, it's so similar that it's easy to say, oh yeah, well Galladay is going to be just like Diggs, but I don't know if that's. Can I tell just... you what the difference is? Go ahead. Barack talk to me. knows about this. Barrett knows about this. Barrett. Barrett knows about this. The yes. clapper. Ketempa. The clapper. Yeah. The clapper yeah. himself, he's the coach for the Giants. I don't yeah, yeah. I don't think the he's... ginger he's he's a, the raging ginger. The ginger uh, clap. Yes, the ginger clap, yes. What this does Retro Bush my... think of the ginger clap? Uh, like I've got a, a whole thing. Like I got so used to seeing it, he'd be like <laughs> Like, dude, stop smiling. We just like turned it over. Yeah. Like, why are you clapping? <laughs> you just heard you had cancer. Why are you clapping? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, I guess the uh, the defense and the prosecution rests. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's land this plane. That was our first episode of the Super Bowl predictions, and our plan is to go ahead and do uh, you know by fourth. We're going to do the next time we do it's going to be fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth week, which will uh, will pretty much put you halfway through the season. So uh, we we want to thank you guys for watching and Connor. Let's talk again about the supporters of our show, man. But mix it up, brother. Mix it up. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, High Volume Music Radio, the pride of the yeah. side. You know, being someone that's grown up in Houston my whole life, I really love to see people keeping it in the city, talking about the city. So much love for High Volume Music Radio. Brian, say it with me, if it ain't loud. Oh! If it ain't, if it ain't <laughs> high volume. It ain't loud enough. I was Holy doing so man. good, and then I shot myself. If it ain't in the loud, foot. if it ain't loud, hey man, you you you, you shot it. yourself in the foot too on that second. I Don't know, even. I know, I know, but I'm just I'm helping you. If it ain't loud, it ain't high volume. You guys are sharting all over yourself. You didn't shoot. <laughs> yeah, that is not a shot. That's a shart. <laughs> yeah. I'm help. I'm trying to help you. Okay. Do you think you can handle a sports host app then, Brock? Uh, yes, I'm gonna have to. Jesus Christ, we we promote it on the show, so why not? Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, just say say a good hello to them. A good sp- what's what's going on, guys? How are you? <laughs> how's Grandma? Hey, yeah. hey, how, how's cousin Benny? Uh, yeah, let them know I've said hello. All right. And is Aunt Margaret still making that great potato soup? Uh. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And, of course, yeah, um, everybody make sure and uh, download Connor's book, You Know Too Much. It's a fantastic read. You'll be happy that you did. And on behalf of Connor, the Gut Marshal, Brock, Retro Bush, Seguin, and me, your humble. The Commish. The Commish. The Commish Retro Bush. And then me, your humble MC, Brian the Amigo Baldwin. We want to thank you for watching. We hope that this, and listening, of course, and we hope that this year is a damn sight better than the last. Let's get some party shots in here real quick. All right, uh, Brock, hit me with some party shots, brother. Throw some knowledge. Listen, if you have that many empty hangers in your closet, then all of your shirts must be on the ground somewhere. Don't let your shirts be on the ground. 
my shirt. All right. They aren't on the ground. Yes. <laughs> Very creative. Do you want to say? Do you want to say something of substance, my friend? Something about fantasy football, maybe. Oh my God! If anybody's watching on YouTube, you'll see exactly why I'm laughing. <laughs> Connor, what's your party shot? That, that's knowledge. That's true. True knowledge. Who's your parting shot, Connor? <laughs> uh, I'd say my parting shot is don't be someone from Dallas. Oh, oh, oh good. Good thing I'm from Okay, well, I would say it's, uh, I'm going to give some knowledge that's going to be fantasy football focused, all right? We're in June, guys, all right? This is the time to start. You know, you don't have to go crazy on the mock drafts, but, man, start peeking your nose in there. Um, right now, the ADP has just exploded with the Julio Jones news, so everything's going crazy right now. So put your put your toe in the water. Keep an eye on what's going on, so that way you can get a plan together so you're not caught flat-footed. All right, man, so we're going to go ahead and close the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching and listening to or uh, watching three uh, B- <laughs> generational B fans bantering about, please like and subscribe. To, uh, please hit that. Please smash that. Please rub it. Whatever you feel like you need to do. Hit it. Like and subscribe. All right. I don't trust you, Brock. Connor, help me out on this. All right. Remember, everyone, in fantasy football, as in life, don't dream it, be it. Yeah. That's how you do it. Take notes there, Brock. Yeah. <laughs> Right here, down right now. All right. Thank you for watching, guys. H-Town.